Today we're going to make tables out of plywood. I've been experimenting with my CNC machine to see what sort of tables I can make using just 3 quarter inch plywood. Not everyone has access to a CNC machine, so I've also made single sheet plywood tables using just a circular saw, orbital sander, and drill. The traditional tools are great in terms of making the design accessible and also material efficient, whereas the CNC lets me start to explore more complex geometry and curves. I typically work through a design using a cheaper grade material, in this case, sanded pine plywood, although <laughs> at this point, no plywood is that cheap. Even though I'm going to use the CNC for this project, I still start with traditional power tools to break down the full 4 foot by 8 foot sheet. I screwed the plywood down to the bed of the CNC and started cutting out the pieces. I'm using the X-Carve Pro from Inventables. It's really easy to use and to set up, and its heavy duty construction allows me to achieve much faster cut times than I did with my previous X-Carve. Once you have the design files, the machine does the majority of the work. The trick is trying to get your cuts to be material efficient by packing the pieces tightly together. I used my jigsaw to cut the tabs that held the pieces in place and started the assembly process. I want the legs and stretchers to be an inch and a half thick, so I just glued two pieces of plywood together and clamped them with my 99 cent spring clamps. The leg pieces that I glued together are different because I want three quarter inch deep recesses that the stretchers will slot into. I'm going to have pieces fit into these slots, so I made sure to wipe out any glue that squeezed into them. Once the glue had fully cured, I used my palm router with a flush trim bit to trim down the tabs. I then switched to a quarter inch round over bit and rounded over the edges. This isn't just for aesthetics, this round over allows these pieces to fit into the sockets that I cut with the CNC where I used a quarter inch diameter bit which left a rounded over corner in the sockets. I wanted this design to work with tables of multiple lengths, so for the lower stretcher, I drew the CNC files in pieces. This gives you more flexibility for efficient cuts, and you can make the stretcher as long as you want. This sanded pine plywood is pretty rough, so I use some wood putty to fill in the major gaps. I then use my orbital sander to sand all the pieces to 150 grit. A drum sander on my cordless drill came in handy for those elliptical holes. There was some scrap left over from the CNC and I'm using those pieces to make supports that aren't visible. I just cut them to the right width on my table saw. These scrap pieces are hidden between the upper cross supports and I'm going to screw through these pieces and into the tabletop to secure it. I assembled each pair of legs with glue and screws. The CNC files I designed are specific to the width of the tables, but because I made the lower stretcher modular, you can keep adding extensions to that stretcher to make the table as long or as short as you want. These last few screws are going through this middle support piece of plywood and into the legs themselves. The plywood I was using is pretty warped, so I thought an upper stretcher underneath the tabletop would be advisable. This time I tried something new. I actually glued the plywood up before cutting it with the CNC. And this actually saves a ton of time because your cuts are nice and clean and there's less cleanup after the glue up. I glued and screwed the stretcher to the underside of the tabletop and then placed the two pairs of legs. I adjusted them to make sure everything was centered and then screwed the pieces together with finished screws. I used wood putty to cover up the screw heads, but if you wanted to get fancy, you could use dowels or wood plugs, but wood putty's fine for this prototype. I used a roundover bit on the ends of the lower stretcher, and then gave the whole table a once over with the orbital sander, making sure to sand down the wood putty nice and flush and get everything really smooth before the finish. For this first table, I'm using Verithane, water-based polyurethane in crystal clear satin. I made sure to remove all the dust 
and then brushed on a thin coat, let that cure, sanded it with 320 grit sandpaper, wiped the dust off again, and then added a final coat. I really like the way this first design looks, but it's very dependent on the stretchers. So I decided to make a second version that uses a stiffer tabletop and independent sets of legs so that you have more flexibility when it comes to tabletop size. This time I glued up the plywood before cutting it out with the CNC and that saved a ton of time. From here I just have to put glue into the recesses and slot the pieces together using screws to hold everything in place. This set doesn't require a lower stretcher although you could use the pieces from the first table if you wanted one. Each set of legs assembles in minutes, and now all I have to do is attach them to a nice rigid tabletop. I also want to experiment with the shape of the tabletop, and so I used the CNC to cut these curved ends, which I then glued to the underside of a single sheet of plywood. Making the top two layers thick around the perimeter not only gives me a sturdy top, it also gives me a line to follow with my flush trim bit so that I have a nice symmetrical shape. After applying the glue, I use some 2x4s to flatten out the tabletop and get rid of the warp while the glue cured. I used my jigsaw to remove some of the excess wood on the tabletop and then trimmed everything flush with my flush trim bit. This bit didn't make it all the way through, but the little that was left was taken care of with my quarter inch roundover bit when I rounded over the top and bottom of the tabletop. I cut some additional pieces of scrap that I glued to the underside of the table and this will just serve as the attachment point for each of the sets of legs. I screwed on the legs, used some wood putty to cover up the screw heads, and then gave everything a once over with the orbital sander. This is the same plywood as the first table, but this time I finished it with Maker Brand Simple Finish. It's a plant-based oil and wax wood finish that is super easy to apply. So this table used a little bit less material and quite frankly, I like that it has a thinner edge profile with just a single sheet of plywood. I'm happy with how both designs came out, but I kind of like the way this one looks a little bit better. I think the thinner edge profile really lets the sculptural quality of the legs stand out. And this one used only about one and an eighth of a sheet of plywood, whereas this one used about one and a quarter. I think I could have gotten this one down to just under a single sheet. Uh, I was there before I added it in the stretcher when I saw that the, the top was warping. So I think with a little bit more packing in the CNC sheets a little more tightly and probably laying out the geometry a little bit better and, and making some of these curves nest inside of each other a little more efficiently, I can get this to a single sheet of plywood. So definitely both designs have room for improvement. This one, I like that there's a lot of versatility to it. You could go with a much longer tabletop provided the top was rigid enough to support itself with the two layers. I also think going to a more expensive or premium Europly plywood, which tends to be stronger than this, this cheap sanded pine, would also eliminate the need for the stretchers and still would probably need a little bit of reinforcement with the second layer, but definitely less material than what I used here. So this is my first time using the X-Carve Pro. Very impressed, heavy duty, much faster cutting speeds. You still could cut out both of these tables on the original X-Carve, which is a considerably more inexpensive machine. Now, I signed a deal with Inventables and I'm gonna be doing a lot of CNC projects. And one of the things we're gonna focus on since there's a pretty hefty price tag with the X-Carve Pro is how you can make projects like these that you could eventually sell. If I was to price these, I would factor in my time. It took me about four to five hours to assemble each one once everything had been cut. So we just add my hourly rate to four or five hours, plus the cost of materials, uh, router bits, glue, finish, stuff like that. If you wanna see more how I drew up these designs in Illustrator, I'll be making another video on my other channel, Trickle Up Design. This is where I go into more depth about design details, how I'm thinking about the project, and I don't like to show too much software tutorial here. I try to keep it more about building, but this other channel is where I'll be talking about how you create the designs, the drawings, and the files that lead to these types of projects.
Oh, and one more thing before you go. We have a new Instagram channel. I'll put a link to that in the description along with our TikTok. I know, kind of old for TikTok, but what can you do? You gotta stay up with the times. We also rebranded our second channel from Home and Modern 2 and now just called it Trickle Up Design. And we'll be using that channel to show more behind the scenes about how I draw, how I use different software, and just to talk about design and where I get my inspiration. So subscribe to this channel, subscribe to that channel, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye everybody.